A.D. Doc Lloyd, partner of Dad Joyner, was one of the most colorful characters in Texas oil boom history. This self-described geologist was eccentric and colorful, yet his notion of oil in East Texas was described by many scientists as a folly. Together, Dad and Doc sold the idea of oil in East Texas, and soon the two decided to test a well on a small farm near Henderson, Texas. Beginning in 1927, Dad Joyner came here to the Daisy Bradford farm just west of Henderson, Texas. And here in the shades of the pines and within sound of the farms nearby, he drilled his now famous Daisy Bradford number no. three oil well. He drilled three wells uh, on her farm. The first two were failures. Uh, he was drilling with uh, second-hand equipment, uh, used pipe, uh, mismatched boilers. Uh, no one gave him a chance at, at bringing this thing in. Near broke, yet unfazed, Dad scrapped and sweet-talked his way into a position to drill a third well on the Bradford farm. This well, he figured, would go as deep as it takes. The way he chose the site for the Daisy Bradford number three was they were skidding it, the rig, from one site from the Daisy Bradford number two to a new well site, and a seal broke. And it was going to cost about ten dollars to purchase a new piece of lumber to repair it, and he didn't have it. And he didn't have any credit anymore. He was down on his luck. So his driller decided they'd just drill it right where it sat. And that's how they chose the, the drilling site for the Daisy Bradford number three. Always the promoter, even in the face of scrutiny and ridicule, Joyner pressed on with his third Daisy Bradford well, using substandard equipment often borrowed and in disrepair. Deeper and deeper, Joyner pushed his well to an impressive depth for the time of 3,500 feet deep. On rickety equipment that was about to fall apart, he finally broke through into a porous sandstone that showed potential signs of oil. Sure enough, one month later, in that same spot, on October 3rd, 1930, his gusher finally came in, and the Daisy Bradford No. 3 changed the landscape of East Texas forever. It was drilled right at the very edge of the field and was not a great producer, but it did create oil fever in the country where there had been no oil before. Now there was an actual well. Following the discovery here at the Daisy Bradford Number no. 3 and other successful attempts such as the one at the Lou Della Crim farm, an amazing and frantic oil boom commenced and soon similar oil wells began sprouting up all across the region at ever-increasing rates. At the nearby Lou Della Crim farm, the following December, a gusher blew in that produced a staggering 22,000 barrels a day. And it was a gusher. It was flowing over 20,000 barrels a day. By January of 1931, on January 26, even farther north in the field, another 15 miles, the Moncrief and Farrell Lathrop well came in, and it came in as a gusher. And that well was known as the Lathrop well number one, which came in north of town uh, and proved that the oil field underneath Kilgore, that the East Texas oil field actually stretched much further north than Kilgore. By this time, people realized that they were not dealing with three separate oil pools, but that it was one huge field. And, and the race was on for riches and uh, some of the most incredible stories in the history of American oil exploration occurred in the next years. So it began to spread and that's what they realized that this was a larger field and that's why it came to be known as the East Texas. It was too big to be Russ County. Soon dozens of wells a day are being drilled and that's when we reach that uh, million barrels a day that begins to impact uh, the oil industry. With each successful well, wildcatters and oil men flooded the area looking for a piece of the pie for themselves. And people flocked to the report of an oil discovery because it meant jobs. And jobs were very, very scarce and money was even more scarce. It changed overnight and became a boom town. There were over 10,000 people. It doubled its size literally overnight. The drilling was so dense in and around Kilgore that a local saying was that a man could climb clear across downtown from derrick to derrick without setting a foot on the ground. By all accounts, 
the great East Texas oil boom was on. It was just a busy, busy, busy place. Typical boom town. And if you see the picture back there of Turner Town with the wooden derrick standing behind the buildings, it kind of gives you a grasp of what a boom town looked like. And uh, that's very definitely what this place was. A typical boom town. That really uh, preserved this area during the uh, breadth of the Great Depression. Uh, when that was really uh, ravaging the rest of the country, the citizens here were um, living in uh, fine fashion. The citizens in East Texas flourished and prospered. While it was national depression, it was local boom. And, and, and truly, there's just never been anything quite like it in the history of the oil business. This flush of new money brought uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It brought everybody. Uh, Kilgore was a little town, uh, 300, it exploded uh, 10,000, literally overnight. By the end of the boom, over 10,000 wells had been drilled throughout the region, making Kilgore one of the richest towns in America. 